Hi friends and welcome back to today's YouTube video where I'll be talking about how exactly I make notes on my MacBook Air at medical school and I'm not just going to be talking about how I make notes but I'm actually going to be showing you guys the whole process so I really hope you find it useful. For those of you who are new here my name is Liddy and I'm a first year medical student at Barts in London. If you really enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this just comment it down below, support this channel by subscribing and leaving a thumbs up at the end. Enjoy! So here I am guys at my desk ready to start work but I usually like the laptop being level to me so we're gonna have to fix that. Great so once my laptop is up I will now go to Safari and go to my university website and then I scroll to the module that I'm going to be looking at. I'll go to my lecture so once that's downloaded here I will then bring up my lecture. Usually I'll start off by reading the learning objectives that will be put at the beginning of the lecture. However, in this lecture there aren't any learning objectives. In the notes section, I'm just going to summarise what I'm reading in the lecture slide in my own words. I usually do this in a and a format. So one thing I do as well is I make my slides look pretty. <laughs> so if there's a word I don't understand, I'll usually highlight it in yellow and next to it write the definition of it in red. So let's find out exactly what trabecular means. I usually just like reduce this make it smaller so it doesn't take meaning away from the sentence and it's clear that that's just like a definition so one thing i also do to support my learning is i make ankies Anki is a platform for online flashcards that you can download for free on a laptop so it's easy for me to just import my questions and answer format into an Anki. It's really easy for me to copy and paste this, insert it here and just copy and paste the answer. I try to make the online flashcards that I make as concise as possible so that it's easy for me to learn from them. When I'm done, all I do is just add that Anki in and it's saved. In terms of learning diagrams with Anki, what I would do is I would screenshot the initial diagram by pressing Command Shift 4. Screenshot that. And that will kind of be like the answer section of the flashcard. So this would be at the back of the flashcard. I will go to insert and just literally A and then I'll draw another one and call this B and I'll just put boxes over all of the labels. Then I'll screenshot this as well, place it in here. And then the question might be label the cerebral meninges so this would be at the front of the flashcard so i'll just add that in and that's done and that is how i put diagrams into ankies i would probably leave these here so that if i was to ever look back on the lecture slide i'd have to actively use my brain to kind of like answer it for myself most of the time i would insert my questions into anki as i go along however it definitely depends on what i'm learning When I'm done with my Ankies, I save it, then I close it. If you want to see a more in-depth video about how I organise my Ankies and how I regularly use it to support my learning, then just drop that in the comment section below. So I don't always make Ankies when I'm going along the lecture slide, it depends what I'm doing. For example, if I'm doing anatomy, then I usually use Ken Hub to support my learning and to make my notes. 
So here I am on KenHub. For those of you who don't know what KenHub is, it's an amazing website that provides detailed videos explaining certain anatomical, histology or medical imaging concepts amazingly. And these are usually supported by clear, high quality diagrams. It also provides interactive quizzes and advanced quizzes to test your weak spots and get you ready for your exams and more. You can sign up to the website for free right now and you can also watch some of their free YouTube videos before deciding whether or not you want to try out the premium membership and all the benefits that come with it. If you do decide to then be sure to use the link in the description box below that will get you 10% off. If you're not convinced then definitely watch this video after. The link for this video will be in the description box below. here it's like a summary of the topic I'm looking at here's a very useful atlas that I'm just using to really visualize everything its name means strong or tough mother due to the fact that it is actually the strongest of the membranes that cover your brain and spinal cord when I'm done with the can help video I usually might go and do a quiz just to make sure that I understand everything. That's just how I use can help support my learning. If there are a lot of complex processes, I might annotate onto it. If there is a diagram in the PowerPoint that I don't understand, I always modify the PowerPoint so that it's personal to me by adding external pictures that I find online. I could make another slide, but the more slides there is, it's just like the more you have to go through. I usually just like putting everything together in one slide. Annotating on the Mac is not the easiest to do, so don't blame me on how atrocious this looks, but it is what helps me learn at the end of the day. So when I'm done with making notes on a lecture, I just save it. So as you can see, making notes on the laptop is not as time consuming as other methods. For example, handwriting, it is easier to summarize exactly what the lecturer is saying and just get it down quickly. In addition to this, if you want to take your learning a step further and make online flashcards on Anki, for example, typing it up is always easier because you can always copy and paste the notes that you need from your PowerPoint and it makes the whole process quicker and just more simple. However, if you are a visual learner that learns from annotating in diagrams or drawing things on is not really the easiest task on the Mac but it's still doable. If you have any questions about my note taking method at university then do feel free to drop it in the comment section below. Tune in for Wednesday's video on why I switched to the tablet as well as how I make notes on Notability on my iPad Air. I remember to share this video with whoever you think might benefit from it. Thank you so much for tuning back in. I'll see you later. Bye!